everyone, it's Still, and welcome in to episode 3 of the Phoenix Sands Wild. And today we have got a jam-packed episode, so we need to hop straight into it. And the start of this episode is going to be me getting as much bone meal as possible. Now, how have I been getting bone meal? Because, you know, this is a brand new world, we haven't got a mob farm yet. So how have I been doing that? I've been getting bone meal from the cactus, collecting our poppies from our iron farm and putting them into our composter, harvesting wheat with a fortune hose so that I can get extra seeds per item, harvesting some of the beetroot that we have here, collecting the pumpkins every time I come past this farm, also taking away these cactus, as well as harvesting our sugarcane here, and finally using the saplings from the spare trees that we have to put them all in the composter to make us some more bone meal, and also killing a lot of skeletons over the night time. And now I'm going to go into Stella is going to spend a lot of time cutting down azalea trees because I need a whole bunch of the oak wood and this is the quickest way, especially easiest on bone meal early game. Well, the Stella Derps continue in this world. I just happened to look in my inventory because I was going to use this area down here just to make a quick moss farm. And I just happened to press E and I'm on 6 out of 429. And now I realize that I did not indeed put mending on my boots. Because in the last episode, and I didn't really talk about this in the last episode, but I got all my gear up and I used two lots of boots and one of them had mending and I grindstoned at it. And I kind of never put mending back on it. So now we got to go get ourselves a mending book and quickly heal that up because that could be bad. We don't want to be losing these boots because they're actually quite good boots. There is a mending book. All right, let's just go around the side and put it in the anvil. Boom. And then we can put those back on. Also, these guys are still my continuous form of XP. But with that, I'm just going to quickly grab myself uh, some moss because I need more bone meal. The added benefit of doing this is the fact that now I have the ability to get rid of dirt and I can fill it back in with regular dirt. It, and this is going to help a lot with our paths. For this episode, I want to continue on expanding our little city that we've started kind of over on this corner here. By doing that, I want to actually fill out this little area here with another little wheat farm like we've got over there. So we're going to be having uh, some horse stables in the back there and a smithery in the middle here. We can have things like forges and also a lava farm. A lava farm is going to be in here as well and potentially a super smelter. But we'll see if I have the ability to get that done today. This walkway is going to be extended up again over on the other side. So pretty much every single space is going to be similar-ish designed to this. Now we just need to go ahead and add in all of the dirt. Now I'm going to spend the time to start planting this wheat field. With the seeds in, now we've got to spend some time getting this retaining wall in. Is this not legitimately the most frustrating task that ever has to happen in a Minecraft world? I have decided that I'm mostly going to use enchanting tables. Oh, efficiency four. Not efficiency five though. Do I do it? Or oh, potentially. What I'm going to do is I'm actually going to grab that and then if I get a better one with the next one, I'll just yeet him and hopefully get another one. But what I'm planning to do is with all of my materials, things that can be enchanted and going to be enchanted and everything that can't be, well, it, that's a bit of a problem. Things like shears and shields don't have the ability to be enchanted. And the proof is in the pudding. As you can see, I have 55 levels and there is a shield in here and there is nothing in here as well as shears. So the only way to make these any good is by using books. For the most part, I do want to go without these villagers particularly. The librarians, I don't want to have a bunch of them and just rely on them. I do want to try and and make enchanting an actual thing in this world. At the moment, just trying to get efficiency five and I'm breaking because we do already have mending through this guy. He does have a couple of books. He has fire protection and frostwalker one, which may actually be handy when we make ourselves a gold farm in the future. I have been doing this forever and I got unbreaking two, <laughs> come on. That is the first unbreaking book that's been above one and it's just two. Oh no, I pressed it. Oh, well, time to go find a lava bucket. Sorry, buddy. Oh, he died very quickly. We did it on breaking three. You are my favorite guy so far, buddy. I still never got efficiency five though. That guy's still efficiency four, which is a little annoying, but oh well. The reason I needed those villagers was because I wanted to be able to do this. I can basically insta mine wool now. So when I put down any type of wool as my building blocks, so usually I use these as like my diagram blocks. As you can see, I've used rooted dirt over there. Usually I use 
use wool just because it's easy to get rid of once you have a good pair of shears. So say for example, I want a five block uh, gap in here. We'll go one, two, three, four, five, and then I'll put that there. Obviously punching them by hand gets very tedious. So quickly bapping them with a pair of shears is very helpful. And now that we've got unbreaking and mending as well, we can also put some on our shield. So we don't have to keep making shields in this game anymore. We can just get them once unless I die a whole bunch and lose all of my items, which will happen, not undoubtedly at some stage in this game. And then we'll have to make more. But for the most part, I'm going to be able to have a mending shield as well. And we can also get a type of banner design on there and design one for the Phoenix Sands world. I always name my shears. Now in my long time world, I have the sheer audacity and for sheer sake. And this one I am going to call sheer agony. They have to be punny, right? With this, we're going to be having an entranceway that comes from this front section here, up the stairs and into the main forge house. Going to be having the house kind of come along this way and around this direction with a shed type of style lean at the front here. Now for this one, we are going to be just going in our regular Minecraft style, not going in a sideways house because that one did my head in the last episode. Out the front here, we're going to be having a forge out the front with a massive chimney going through the roof. I also feel like I should add a villager in this section, maybe one of the last furnace guys, maybe just to kind of have a bit more life in this area. So we're going to have to make sure this is all villager proof so that they don't come down the front here and fall and take damage. One of the materials that I need for today's build is blackstone. And unfortunately, that means I have to literally enter the depths of hell, which means I'm just creating this little pathway and hope I thought I was going to be able to say, and hopefully I won't encounter any lava, but that is a little bit, of bit foreboding, isn't it? Hopefully we won't encounter any more lava is what I should have said. So I'm going down into the Y16 level uh, just so that we can potentially get ourselves some ancient debris. So just going to be, uh, okay, no, no, we look like we're safe. As you can see, we're a little bit far from the lava level. That looks like it is lava level. Why hello there. Okay, so very clearly I am on, my way still. And then this little baddie comes into play just sitting here waiting for me ready to take it and make it into something beautiful. There we go. Hidden in the depths our very first ancient debris in this world. Oh, that is so cool. I can't believe I got it just here. Maybe if I dig around. Oh, nope. That is lava. Okay. It doesn't look like there's any more. Sometimes I like to dig around a little just because some they can kind of like sit right beside each other. And we got it. Now it's time to mine out some of this beautiful blackstone and hopefully we'll be able to find some more ancient debris lying around in here. I promise I am a good YouTuber. I actually built this up and I was giving you guys a play-by-play -play commentary of what I was doing here. And I forgot to unmute my mic from when I did the last scene. But let me explain what's going on here. This face here is gonna be made of the stone brick variants and obviously a bit of cobblestone and andesite mixed in. And we're coming out the front of this build with some deep slate and then some spruce signs to kind of break up the really heaviness of, of the deep slate. And I had said just before I was rudely figured out that I was actually not talking to you guys, that I was using a differentiation in lightness and darkness within this build. This is where we're going to be having our outside forge area. We're going to put a fireplace here that is going to be used as our forge. Now we have this big rounded off front face because we're going to have an inside section as well. I'm not 100% sure what's going to go on this interior yet, but I'm sure we'll be able to find some really cool items. Maybe this is the front of a store. Yeah, maybe this could be a inside of our store. That is quite a cool idea, Stella. Now to continue with this bottom section, we're going to go ahead and continue with the same style. Now with this section here, I am just going to put down some dark oak logs. And that is a little bit of a reminder for us that we need to put some type of internal wall on this section so that we can have this space separated by that wall. The first layer now officially in, we get to start looking towards the second layer. What I've kind of thought now is that this is going to be our down downstairs shop type area with a small, what do you call it, staircase to a secondary floor, which is going to be the residence up the top. At the moment, I'm 
really happy. This is starting to come out really well and I'm happy with the color scheme, but we're going to be going for our colored roof being black to gray gradient. I know that is different from all the colors we have so far. Don't get me wrong. I love color, but we don't want it to become way too oversaturated and we can't see the differences within the builds. So coming out to the secondary layer, I'm going to add a block stair or stair block, sorry, on these edges. And the reason being is we're going to actually bring our secondary layer one block out, kind of like we did over on this side on the top. And I love that aspect of that build. Now I've decided that this front face, I'm going to be using looms again, and we're going to want to put that on this front face and then some on the back face as well. Now in here as well, I'm going to be using diorite, calcite, white concrete powder, and also some white wool. So we're going to go ahead and add diorite on the bottom. I know, I know not everyone's favorite building block, but it's okay. I promise it'll work. Oh, wait a minute. No, we need to go forward one. Oh, Stella's Bells, what are you doing? Now with the calcite and diorite walls up, we have the front face to go. I think I'm going to start off with the packed mud, actually. Bring it across all the way. And we're going to also add in our mushroom blocks. Every now and again with uh, my detailing, I like to just put the darker block back on top of the lighter block or the gradient above it. And that is just to kind of meld it together a little bit better. And it does seem to work quite well. Now, unlike that front face, and we're going to do the exact same on the back. Now we don't want this ugly underside. So we're going to go ahead and cover that up and use ourselves some half slabs and then also some trapdoors to give it a bit more flair. This is what the build's starting to look like. And it is time to add in our black stone to cobblestone gradient, although the cobblestone's still over there. And I'm excited to get this roof in because I think it could look really, really cool. Hopping in with the build. And this is what we've got going so far. I made a little cute little jut out here and I actually really like how it's coming together. On the back, we do have a few bits and pieces to add more of the decorations and such like that. Also cleaned out the inside of this. I'm going to be putting like regular spruce on this level and we'll make an interior and stuff like that. But for now, this is what it is looking like. A tiny change has happened since the last clip. We've got a new walkway here that is going to be leading up towards this back end over here. And what I'm thinking in the future, maybe next episode, we could plan out a build here that is going to be housing our wooden carts and things like that. Maybe the blacksmith also looks after some of the carts here in the village. And what I'm thinking now is I want to add some stables in the back of here. Behind here, I've also dug out some of this section because this is going to all turn into grass with a foundation here uh, or retaining wall, I, I mean, that is going to be holding up this edge. And all of our grass and dirt feature, kind of like over here, is going to be over there as well. Unfortunately, there is a little uh, hiccup in our plan. We can't use grass and we can't use things like ferns because they do turn into a disgusting color and I just can't do that. So we're going to have to be a bit more smart about this. That is why we've been using things like the azalea woods and the azalea leaves because they work really well within this. We've got the forge now up in here with a nice little, uh, I always forget what these are called. I always go to say campfires, but they're not campfires, Stell Bells. They're a fireplace and that is a chimney. Probably spent at least 10 hours building, but that's okay. I'm really happy and proud of what what is starting to develop in this world. We now have a retaining wall and I'm super happy with how it turned out. On for a, a little bit more of a medieval style retaining wall. It goes around the back. We've extended up this roadway as well, coming around the back end, which is going to lead into our pastures. Now, what I'm thinking is we're going to have the horses out through here and we're going to have an interior stall on this side. We now have some framing up, help us with getting our stable set up here. Also, added in some very basic stone bricks to at least get the floor in, at least for now. For a very simple uh, side idea, I've just gone for like this Y shape pattern. We're going to be filling in the roof with our dark oak stairs, very similar to what we've done over here. Most of the build is now in. We have our stables ready to go. We have lighting as well, which is quite nice. And we have what is the start of a roof. But I ran out of materials again. Ooh, piece of candy. 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 Ooh. 
piece of candy. And just like that, I roofed it. And I'm super happy with how it is. And we got some vents on the top here so that any like hot air can come through the top and then escape because we're in a desert. And I need to go find myself some horses because we can't have a stables without any horses in there. That would be silly. Looks like I'm going to be going on an adventure to go find myself some more horses. Where did our previous horse, where did we leave them? Um, That's a, that's a good question. Row, row, row your boat gently down the stream. Merrily, 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 merrily. My horse is on a lead. What I am thinking is I might put another little section where uh, there's some type of horse area up here. Thinking it could be quite nice to have some type of paddock or something like that. Uh, maybe for all the broodmares to come up here and have some babies. And I think I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing that I did down here. At least kind of similar to what I've done down here over there. Uh, so there is a little bit of consistency in between this area. But super happy with this, how this is starting to turn out. But we do have to kind of move on from at least this build, even though I'm going to go ahead and see if I can get myself a decent horse to run around with in the world. Maybe even a mule. That could be the answer that we've been looking for. A donkey and a horse equals a mule. And I believe we can put chests on the mules. Two of those guys are ready to go and we need to bring donkey over in here as well at some stage. But I still have to do a lot of decorating within this area. We've got the bee house that I didn't do in the last episode. Need to do that. Still got to put our lava farm in here here as well. I just kind of went ahead and started building this whole uh, monstrosity that wasn't supposed to be in this episode. It's fine. I promise it's it's fine. On the outside of this building, I decided to go with just some piles of our resources here uh, just to kind of simulate that these would be where uh, people would be coming over, grabbing these materials and then moving them over towards the forge. I don't know what you want to call this, but it's just kind of parked here, ready to go, ready for the iron to be transferred over to the forge to kind of start smelting down. And here is where I think the person who is going to be using this area would be uh, using like these materials. So a little bench here and our little cauldron that I'm going to fill with, with some fresh water so they could use this area kind of properly. So here is what I am thinking. I'm going to go put a item frame there and there. And then we're going to use this dark oak sign just there and there. I love how this works. And then we need to pop it and pop it there. We go. We've got ourselves a little desky here that you can pull out the drawers for, and maybe there's a link on top of here. We're gonna put some water in here, and we're gonna put a what do you call this thingy? Switchy thingy. I'm forgetting all the names. Well, we're gonna call it the switchy thingy. That is then gonna be pulling into the cauldron. That is gonna provide our cauldron with water. We're then also going to use another item frame and put our axe in there, and we're just gonna flip it around. Boom! There we go. Now we have ourselves a little hammer next to our anvil. And I saw this on Pinterest, and I thought it was really really cute is this idea of having like a tall rack on top and then we can put ourselves some of these up there. We can put ourselves an iron sword and maybe another iron sword and maybe even a chain up there and then we can just pop these all down and that looks really cute. I love that. So there we go. We could even flip those to be directly in line with the fences as well. So let's just flip these all around. There we go. Okay that is even cooler. Okay I like that and and we also wanted to add another item over here. So let's add ingot and we're just going to flip it around to that shift and hit. There we go. Here we go. We've got some copper ingots and I'm going to put them just randomly here. Okay, that looks kind of cool. There is very much a difference in between the iron ingot and then the copper ingot, which kind of looks like it is glowing. Okay, that is really, really cool. I'm happy with that effect. Now we just have this section to go. Maybe we could have additional materials here. Maybe even some more of like these types of carts. Maybe you could have another cart really close to these materials. Oh, that's a really good idea. Let me just do that right now. We've got one, we've got two, and we're just about to pop in the third one here. Now, you could go ahead if you're going to use this similar design and add things like trapdoors. Let's go grab one of those. Uh, and you could probably put trapdoors on the side to make it a little bit more sturdy. So let's go with that and then that. And that would make it, again, a little bit more sturdy. Or you could even use things like a, a spruce sign. I've used these in the past and they do look really cool. So let's add a spruce sign here and a spruce sign there. And then these are going to be moving materials back and forth throughout this little yard that we have set up here. Now, as I said before, that this like little laneway is going up towards 
the top and towards the stables. And what I think could be really cool is to create some type of cart design that kind of adds movement into this area and allows us to have, I don't know, a reason for these being here. And maybe we can have a horse being led halfway up back towards the stables. Also, I know I always film at night. I wonder how much of this series so far has been filmed in the night. I have no idea, but I would assume it's quite a bit. I forgot some scaffolding in the roof. I was meant to fix up the roof. Oh. Do not want any drop creepers. I've had to deal with two drop creepers today and it destroyed the roof twice. I don't want to deal with a third. The roof is now completely spawn proof. We've got some glow lichen up here, preventing any reapers or any other type of mobs from spawning on top, as well as the stable is also now completely spawn proof. Still going to do a couple of more houses. I forgot to oxidize that. We'll have to fix that in the future. And then on the inside, I've started creating this little uh, shop space. I think we could have two little racks here that are going to create with our tools and we're going to do the same in between there. What I'm also thinking is we can use the honey blocks that we have from our honey farm and put a villager in here and that will allow us to have a actual working villager be in here as well. I think that would be a really cute little setup. So we're going to have to go get a villager and bring them down here. That is not going to be the funnest part of this episode. We're going to boop a button. Boop. Collect our villager and boop. I want you to collect the blast furnace. Okay, buddy, you have a job. I'm going to pop this and come over here, bud. Look, look, look. Here's your blast furnace. Yes, 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 yes. That's it. That's it. That's it. Okay, let's put the boat here. That's it. That's it. No, don't jump on the pumpkins. Yes. Okay, let's go for a little bit of a drive. Okay, let's see if this works first. Go. Let's bop the villager out and he's going to go in. Th okay, that's kind of not. No, 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 no. No, that's, that's definitely not what I want you to do, buddy. Okay, let's just quickly. Okay. No, 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 no. You you had one, one job, one, one job, literally one is to fall into the honey. Ah, there we go. Okay. Now I have to clean up all the mess. Thanks, buddy. Thank you. I did not realize they could jump up on top of a trapdoor like that. What on earth? I thought that was only us as players, but now you're not going to be able to jump on top of anything at all. And we have the ability to get iron leggings and chest plates. Woo. I have come up here about four times now and every single time I've come up with the intention of grabbing a barrel and ADHD is definitely kicking in and and I keep forgetting to get that barrel. So let's just do that right now. Let me just grab some half slabs. Stella, you even made the barrels. Just go put the barrels where they need to go. We're going to put a barrel here and a barrel here. Now, what I've decided up here, I'm going to be putting our lava farm and I'm going to try and make a very small super smelter. It should work. And I'm going to put the output into this barrel here. So that is why I wanted barrels instead of just a spruce blog in there. I will leave a link to this very small super smelter in the description down below. So if you want to make it yourself, you're going to be able to. Now this is where the heads mod is going to come into its own and we're going to be able to create so many cool things into the future. There's a silver coin pile and a gold coin pile and we can go slash head so we can have all of these different blocks kind of decorating our world. So say for example if we want to go to plants we'll go to plants and we can get all these different things so we could make ourselves a blood orange tree. We could make tomatoes and all these other things. There's, there's so many we can do with this mod and it is one of the coolest coolest mods that I get to play around with. It would be nice if this could go onto a armor stand and be placed a little bit lower. So we'll go ahead and grab one of those. Okay let's mine these two up and instead I'm gonna stand there, I'm gonna stand there, put this on this head and then this one on this head like so. Then we're gonna flip to being small and gravity is always turned off. There was an incident once with an armor stand with an the player and it was very unfortunate. Invisible as well, gravity and small. And we want it to go down. There we go. And just like so. Perfect. There we go. That is exactly what I wanted. So now we got our silver coins and our gold coins like that. Now, because I'm thinking forward, I am also just going to knock out this block and put this block down. And that will mean we can put ourselves some emeralds in there. So when inevitably we do want to trade with this guy, we can then uh, have all of this ready to go. Stella thinking with a whole noggin this time. So far I had to move our system from over here to over here because it's going to be a little bit bigger and it's going to give us more furnace spaces. I also put these two at the end. This is going to be kind of like useless space. So if we need to we can put our blast furnace items in here and our smoker items but they are going to have to go manually. And what I was thinking is we could have a hopper system on top with a auto bamboo farm and that would allow us to then get a automatic amount of fuel 
constantly coming in through the system. And that is a very smart idea. I had to rebuild this already twice. I was going to try and make it a two module system and it didn't work out. Now we put it on mud because it is just a pixel below and allows the items to fall straight through. So we've got a hopper underneath. We also have these hoppers around the edge that also then pick up the items that fly off into the sides. We have the light on top so to help the bamboo grow and to also prevent any mobs from spawning. And then that goes into our fuel system out the back here. And that is going to be a permanent amount of bamboo constantly creating fuel for our smelting array. So all we have to do is flick the lever and then that minecart, which at the moment is the wrong one, but the minecart goes back and forth and delivers the items. Now that this system is ready to go, we're just going to put in, let's say, eight cobblestone. I'm going to put that in to this minecart hopper. And we can put it into the one above as well. So let's just put this in there. You saw that came into the Minecraft hopper and then we put it across. Some of it is smelting already and we're already getting quite a few pieces of bamboo in here. And as I said, this is going to be a fully operating system. So I can just leave these going back and forth the whole time and it would fill up. But what I'm going to do is actually turn this off for a moment, let it fill up and then I'll run it through at some stage once I kind of finish other things. We have our lava farm over the back here with all of our stalagmites and some hidden lava. We've also got some storage here on the side and then I've gone ahead and decorated this area as well. I had to put something here because these are kind of exposed and wasn't too happy with that but everything is functional. Also have the bamboo constantly going as well which is going to be absolutely fantastic whilst we're building around in this area. So with the forge area almost completed at this point I've gone ahead and started and renovating this area which I want to be the area in which we have our beehive or the bee handle marketplace. That was what we we're going to do in the last episode and I ran out of time. So instead we're going to do it this episode. I've so far got this little bit to go and what I'm thinking is we're going to have a walkway up this direction and we're going to have a medium sized market stall for here and seeing as it's just across the road from the bee market it makes sense that that would be the case. Now that is going to be our entryway into an undercover section in which we can purchase items. Okay so we've got this section now and we need another entryway so we're going to go about another three in and place another barrel. We're going to go for an orange and a light gray combo here. Now that is going to give us the rough height. We might go up another one in the middle, but I'm kind of liking that for our height. Now we have some spruce wood here and I think I'm going to go up one, two, three. I'm going to go ahead and strip that wood down. On this back wall, I actually want to create some shelves. So doing something like so will allow us to have the ability to put some candles on here and make them actually look like they are ready for purchase. So we'll do the same on this side, like so. And now it is going to be time to add in a roof to this and I want to have the wall curve around this back. Now to finish off this little floor bit here, I'm going to need to go back out towards our mango swamp because we need some more pack mud. So on a journey we shall go. Actually scrap that idea for just a second. You know what we could do instead of, you know, walking all the way over there? We have horses. Let's go tame the horses and see if we can get a decent one that can then make this whole process a lot easier. And we are also going to use donk or donkey to also help with this process because we are going to create a mule. Absolutely all of these guys were super slow. Let's see if this guy can jump though. I've got myself a, a little B-dubs jumping thing and they go two blocks. Oh, okay. We can go two blocks, two and a half blocks. Okay. No, we can't go two and a half blocks or two blocks in a campfire. Done. Well, not too bad of a jumper. Still two blocks is pretty good, but I wonder if there is a three block horse in here. We have a little uh, mule. Look at you. You're so cute. All right. Time to give you all of the golden carrots and I need some more. Out of all of the ones that we just bred up, this is actually the fastest boy and this is just a mule. There we go. We have a mule. We have 15 slots as well. Perfect. It's a frog. Hello, froggy. We actually haven't seen one of these guys yet. No, don't the frog. Not the frog. Okay. Look how deep you are in the mud. Oh my goodness. We need to figure out at some stage where we're going to put you so that we can make some froggy lights. Lots and lots and lots of mud later. We can now go back and make ourselves some packed mud and some packed mud bricks. And just like that, we have ourselves a little candle stand. Now that all that is left to do is get the candles from over in that barrel there and 
and move them in to their new housing space. Just on the side, we have some candle making materials and I just lit some of the candles to give a bit of an ambience to this area and I love it. I think it's absolutely adorable. And sometime in the future, I might be able to do something similar to what the hermits have done with their little uh, like things like the hermit permits and stuff like that. Then we could add some type of signage here on the front and have like bees for sale and maybe bees floating around. But for now, this is kind of cute. Super happy with how this has turned out. I do need to do the interior of this build and we never end up actually getting any bees in here. So at some stage, I need to do that as well. This also gives me the opportunity to go and find ourselves another meadow. And I do know where one is over in that direction. So back over the massive coral ocean that we have over that way. And I might go out that direction and see if I can get myself another couple of base colors for the horses. I definitely want more. We've got a black one and we've got the bays at the moment, but I believe there's about seven after looking up on the wiki as to the different color variations. And we do have a couple here. So we've got the black one. We have a couple of the chestnuts available, but I do want to have all of the colors available. Black sock horses obtained. Oh, wow. There's a lot of horses in this herd. Okay. We've got ourselves a gray horse and yes, bay. Okay. Perfect. These are the next two that we're going to need. Although I don't really want to leave this many horses here. I don't have that many leads either, but I will note down these coordinates for the future. We found our next two colors, the darky chestnut and then the gray. One more horse off our list. And I found myself some sea turtles, which means we can get ourselves some sea turtle eggs. I just need to get some of these guys. We're just going to feed you and you and you. And please do not go not near the lava, please. That is a disaster waiting to happen. Get away from the lava. Get away from it. Nom, 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 nom. 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 Four beautiful eggs to take us back. And I think that may be the last of the horses that we need. Yes, it is. Perfect. And we've got all of the seven types of horses now, which means we can head back home. Oi, don't you hit my horse. That's rude. Get out of here. That stinking skeleton nearly killed my horse. Trying to kill me. To be fair, I probably should be sleeping during the night. I have so many horses right now. Some of them are raring over on the bloody water as well. I've also got a baby horse. I didn't know that baby horses could get in boats, but apparently they can. Fun little fact for you guys. Okay, we may now have a lot of horses. I'm pretty sure we're getting close to having every single one of the horse colors and breeds done, but we also have a speedy boy and quite a good jumper, if I can prove that. There we go. So he can do all of these and even the ones out the back. So at the moment, I have been able to get them to this one. It takes a little bit of timing, but I can actually get four and a half blocks. We have yet to get to the mysterious five block one. Uh, so I'm going to do a bit more breeding, but that is pretty good. We're going to have a quite a quick horse going around the, around the world now, and we can kind of get around different places a lot quicker, which is great for me because at the moment we're not planning on getting a latcher anytime soon. I think I'm going to call you Smokey. There we go. We got ourselves a named horse and Smokey is going to be going in to the stables up here. I'm actually pretty happy. Thank you, Smokey, for doing such a good job and for being such a fast boy. But there's a lot of horses. Look at how many we've got now. I am going to have to figure out what to start naming all these horses. And I do have to double check that we have every single variation. I don't think we do at this stage. I know that there's definitely a couple we don't have. I'm probably going to just spend some time getting every single variation just for the fun of it. Okay, I want to test something. If I make Smokey Jr. and our little donkey over here, I wonder if Smokey Jr. will be a quicker donkey. Okay, there we go. I didn't know if that was actually going to be a thing. So Smokey Jr. is actually quite fast and that is is also very cool. Now, does Smokey Jr. jump? Okay, two and a half blocks? No. Okay, two blocks? Let's give it a go. Okay, so Smokey Jr. can go two blocks. Also is a bit quicker as well compared to the mule that we had earlier, which does mean we are going to be able to travel a little bit quicker as well, whilst also having a chest. So I guess we have Smokey and now Smokey Jr. to provide us with different benefits. So say, for example, if we need to go out and get resources, we could use Smokey Jr. here, uh, whereas if we need to travel a long distance to maybe get one or two things, we can use Smokey. That is actually a brilliant idea. And I'm going to have to see if I can find myself another name tag. If not, I definitely know we have a villager that should be able to provide us with one. I hear they name the Smokey Junior. I have so many horses and I just realized that I'm missing one particular color, the dark brown horse. And I'm going through a lot of effort to get all these horses. At the moment, I think we're about halfway through making sure that we have every single color variation of each one, but I don't want to go through all this work and then not have a particular color. So that means we're going to be on another journey. Hello, dear friends. Let me take you back to our house.
horse. Okay, we've got three brown, oh, dark brown horses, and one of them has a black spots, which is quite nice. So two are normal, and then one's black spots. I am going to get all of these horses by the end of the episode. You watch. Row, row, row your boat gently down the stream. Merrily, 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 my horses are on a lead. No way. I have never found one of these in a deep dart or deep slate. Oh my goodness. Okay, I was coming down to get more gold to breed the horses. And there's so many diamond ores. Oh, I forgot that this was a thing. Oh, this is so cool. After literal hours and hours and even more hours of mining for gold to make golden apples, I realized literally on the last two breeds that I could have just used golden carrots, which I could have got from the farmer, seeming as I was using the farmer to give me the apples. I feel like the biggest doofus on earth. But on the upside, we have got all the horse breeds here now. The only one we do not have access to, I guess two technically, one that we don't have access to at the moment is the skeleton horse and then of course the zombie horse, which cannot be obtained in survival Minecraft, at least at this stage. It'd be kind of cool if we could get that though. Uh, we also have like a massive excess of horses. Let me go show you. We just have a spare few horses. I actually had to move them out of the spawn chunks because I was starting to lag and that because of how many entities were over there. So at the moment, all of my spare horses are over here and then we'll like kind of put them throughout the kingdom at some stage in the future. But I also need some names for these guys. So chuck some names down in the chat below. We have got access to villages now and also name tags. So as you may remember, this is the bee shop here on our world and we had the bee farm on the other side and now we have access to get all of these little honey heads. So I just used a whole bunch of armor stands and made them small and also got the custom heads uh, from the head index that I've been using and I love it. Also done a very, very basic interior and on the back, if we come through this other door, if you may remember, there's some storage. Now some of this storage is going to be usable, some of it won't be like this one here, but mostly it is for decoration. So in the future, if we need to put down a whole bunch of shulkers or something, we can put them in here for honey storage and beeswax storage, which is kind of cool. I'm really happy with how this turned out and I don't know, maybe I might do a little bit more interior work at some stage, but for now, this is quite homely. Another thing I am going to do off screen is go ahead and start getting this area done and also on the other side. So I want to get all of the interiors done so that I'm not having to play catch up because one thing I have noticed in one of my worlds is I tend to not do my interiors and then I kind of feel like they're always lacking towards the end of like doing areas. So I want to make sure that that is not the case in this world and making sure that everything has a purpose. So behind here, I think I'm going to have all of the storage or excess storage for the farm. So just a bunch of barrels and random things. And then along here, I've got to figure out, I feel like we could have some type of iron shop or some type of keeper here. I'm not 100% sure. I'm going to have to have a, have a little bit of a thinky think on that one. I also decided that the inside of that house over there is going to be increased with storage because at this stage, I am really starting to run out of storage. And we're only in on episode three and we still have so many farms to build in this world as well as so many houses that we need at least a temporary storage solution. And realistically, this was only meant to be for a couple of episodes. And as you can see, like just from getting the materials for just a couple of the builds, we're already starting to outgrow this. Like all the woods are over at the other area at the moment. We're even chopping the trees down just because they would not simply fit in here. As well as things like all of our flowers and such like that are already starting to overflow in this area. So I'm going to increase upstairs anything that is kind of like an unusable material that I'm going to use a lot. Say for example, blackstone, I will put up in this secondary section and we'll figure it out over some time period. Maybe we'll go up another one and kind of figure out what this will be eventually. We can maybe tear it down in the future and put something else in here. And with this side, we have even more additions into this area. We've kind of got this storagey, uh, like little outposty bit. We have some minecarts and chests here. Then I started putting some rails in and it's not really finished. There is definitely some details that can be added, but for now, I think I'm going to leave it like that. I also wanted to show you some more details that I kind of done. I've gone ahead and done some of these and some cute little uh, bits and pieces as well as 
adding in some flowers in this area and also cleaned up the chess monster that started to kind of grow from here. We've also gone ahead and added in a cute little, uh, I don't know, water heaty section of this little build. And unfortunately, that is all I have time for today's episode. Thank you guys very much for watching until the very end of the episode. You guys have been absolutely incredible. And I want to say thank you so much for all the love and support on these first couple of episodes. And I really do hope that in the future, we have a very cool, bustling metropolis of a world. I can't wait. And we have quite a few things that we got done in today's episode. Let's do a quick little recap. We got ourselves this forge behind us. We got ourselves a smelting array and our little micro farm on top of it. We also have a little micro lava farm creating ourselves a little candle shop and got Smokey Jr. and every other horse in Minecraft. Thank you guys for hanging out until the very end of the episode. You guys know what to do. Hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, and I'll see you guys in the next episode. Bye for now.